In this video, I'm going to go over the process of rendering out an uh, image in Substance Painter using iRay. So I'm going to start by going to Mode and Rendering iRay. And when you first open this up, it will have whatever environment you were using in the viewport. The default one is the uh, panorama environment. So a few things about uh, rendering an iRay. You'll see that there is a status which is done. When we first opened it up, it started rendering. And it rendered um, 812 iterations in 19 seconds. So by default, this is set to 10. I had changed it before. So when you first open this up, it's going to be set by to 10. And if I come in and move this, You'll see that it's now saying rendering. It is going through iterations, and basically it will do as many iterations up to a thousand in the 10 seconds that I let it render. Um, it's likely that I'll need more than that, um, but once I get it set up, I will make those adjustments. So the next thing I want to do is come in and I don't want to be able to see a background in here so I'm going to scroll down where it says dome and check clear color and then you can adjust the color of the background. I'm going to have it just be this kind of neutral gray and I want to make sure that ground is checked so that I actually have um, some shadowing and occlusion that's happening on the ground plane. Then I can go up and change my background. And since this is a product, I'm going to change it to this soft front studio lighting, um, which gives a very typical product studio lighting kind of um, lighting. So then I can start adjusting quality. So this doesn't look too bad, but you can see that there's a little bit of spottiness in the um, the shadowing. So I'm going to increase my max time to 20. And when I do that, it will continue rendering and it will render up to 20 seconds and get as many iterations up to a thousand as it can. So you can see this time it got up to 833 iterations and it looks a little better. But I think I'm going to increase it just to 30 seconds again and let it re-render and uh, see the overall quality. So yep, that, that increased it even more. Um, that's looking pretty good. So thing to remember with this is if you get up to the max samples that set, which in this case is a hundred, I mean a thousand, and you find that you're still seeing spottiness in your render, then you would need to increase the number of samples and increase the max time. So max samples and max time. Um, the longer it renders and the higher the number of max samples, the higher the quality is going to be. There's always going to be a point at which it um, doesn't really uh, give any better quality. So you want to just make sure that you increase those in slow increments until you get to a high quality render. So the other thing to remember is that you can adjust the position of your lighting. So if you hold down shift and your right mouse button, you can move the position of the lighting around until it is in a position that you like. So you can play around with both the position of your object and the position of your lighting. So uh, depending on what the overall look you're going for is. And you can play around with the different lights to see what lights give the overall look that you're going for. You can see the different lights give different overall looks. I think for this I do like that soft light in the front. So something like that. So once you get your lighting moved to the position you want and the um, object position the way you want, then you can let it render. And uh, you can say what size you want your render to be. So I'm going to click the override viewport resolution and I'm going to 
make my renders 2048 by 2048. This is a fairly uh, tall object, so we don't want the, the image to be too, too wide. All right, so again, I'm gonna let it render. It's taking a little bit longer now because I set the max time longer. Um, the overall size of the image is bigger too. All right, so that is done now. So I can scroll down here, say save render, and save it to where I want it to be saved. I'm just going to save it into um, my images folder and call this hammer render one. And then if I want to do another render, I can just come in and adjust the overall position of my hammer. And I can adjust the position of the lights. and let it render again. And then again, save out that render, call it two, and you now have those renders saved out. Then when you're done that, you can go back to painting mode and um, save out your project.